Raceway fans, and thank you for joining us for week seven racing action from Skagit Speedway. On today's card, we'll be bringing you two heat races of your Sportsman Sprints, followed by the A main of your Sportsman Sprints. Following that, we will be bringing you the A main of the Modifieds which will then be followed by the A main of the Northwest Focus Midgets and we'll be wrapping up today's racing action with the A main for your Outlaw Tuners. And we're starting off with Heat 1 racing action of your Sportsman's. Over Memorial Day was supposed to be the John Carroll Classic at Skagit Speedway. However, Mother Nature had a different story and it got rained out. So the John Carroll Classic has now been split between week seven and week eight. And we are featuring the Sportsman Sprints, Modifieds, Northwest Focus Midgets, and Outlaw Tuners in part one, week one of the John Carroll Classic. Corey Swatzina in the number two car is showing the way in heat one racing action being chased by Steve Parker. Sean Johnson holds on to the third spot. And folks, this one is going to end up with the number two car of Corey Swatzina taking the win. In the second spot, the 23P of Steve Parker. In the third spot, the 14 of Sean Johnson. Michael Bollinger in the 73 in the fourth spot. Kelsey Carpenter in the 79K in the fifth spot. Joe Lyon in the sixth spot. Brett McGee in the seventh. John Tharp in the eighth. And James Bundy in the ninth position. And here we go with your Heat 2 racing action for your sportsman. We have a seven car field. And making good his pole is the 29 at Eric Turner as he goes to the point and will lead the first lap. Ashley Johnson in the O car. Boy, she has really developed as a driver, and I have to think it's just, whoa, and Ashley just got that car up on the front right wheel, and how she managed to keep that car from going over, uh, that's anybody's guess. Uh, maybe she was a little startled there by uh, Jamie Barnes getting by her, hard to say. But the good news is she's got that car back on all fours and is currently in the third spot. And just as I was saying, Ashley Johnson is uh, showing really some nice signs of development this year. She's been running the sports from now for several years. And, you know, folks, I think it's just a question of time before she uh, is going to win one of these. Meanwhile, in the fourth spot, uh, the winner of uh, two of your sportsman feature races this year in the 7-0, Chase Getz. And this one is going to end up with the 29-year pole sitter of Eric Turner taking the win, followed by the 06 of Jamie Barnes in the second spot. Ashley Johnson hangs on to the third spot in the old car. Chase gets in the 7-0 in the fourth spot. Jess Lee, I'm not folks going to try and pronounce his last name. He's a young man uh, that's just beginning his career in the sprints. Number 21, Jesse. Malachi Gimmer in the sixth spot. And in the third, seventh and final spot, the 33 of Bill Root. And yes, I will find out how to pronounce Jesse's last name correctly. And here we go with your A feature main event for your Sportsman Sprint Cars. Everybody makes it cleanly into turn one and out of turn two. And we have got Steve Parker and Sean Johnson fighting for that lead position as we watch the field. Navigate the first couple of laps here. Sean Johnson now takes over the point, followed by Steve Parker. K 
Kelsey Carpenter has moved into, I believe he's into the third spot. I'll check and verify that. Driving the 57 car. Well, let me see who is driving that 57 car. Oh, it's James Bundy. Long time competitor at Skagit Speedway. John Johnson continues to show the way in that 14 car. And should he hold on for this win? I'm not sure, but I believe that would be his first win here at Skagit Speedway. Steve Parker continues to hold that second spot, longtime veteran competitor at Skagit. Kelsey Carpenter in the 79 finally looks like he may be shaking off the, uh, how do I want to word it, the, uh, Bumps and bruises of a bit of a tough start for him this season as Kelsey looks like he's coming back into form. Sean Johnson now beginning to catch slower traffic. See how the young man does for navigating his way through traffic as he continues to hold that point. Of course, Steve Parker is definitely hoping that uh, traffic will slow Sean Johnson up. And a shot of Ashley Johnson. I, I was incorrect because Ashley Johnson was, is holding the third spot. So Kelsey Carpenter is running fourth as Ashley Johnson continues to show a strong run as she is in the third spot and defending it well against the veteran the 79k of Kelsey Carpenter let me remind you Kelsey Carpenter is the only driver at Skagit Speedway to have won the track championship in every division literally the 410s the 360s and the sportsman's And John Tharp right there in the 06, he did not want to be a lap car. He came back and fought uh, very uh, diligently, um, lost for words there, as he unlapped himself. And he continues to race extremely hard, your uh, leader, Sean Johnson. And this is allowing Steve Parker and Ashley Johnson to begin to close the gap up to your leader of Sean Johnson and folks I have to apologize for that uh, there was contact there between your leader Sean Johnson and Bill Rude and Bill Rude is he, the, for whatever reason on the contact caused Bill to have to slow down brought out the caution and the good news is is that Sean Johnson was able to maintain his uh, uh, car, his not, I was going to say momentum, but he did not come to a stop. So he was able to hold on to his first position. Uh, so good news for Sean Johnson as he came out of that incident unscathed. In the case of uh, Bill Rude, he found himself, uh, uh, I think he had to go off the track. Boy, Bill and, and Kelsey Carpenter, they're just having a tough start to this season and as we're watching uh, Kelsey Carpenter right now as he continues to chase Ashley Johnson who continues to put pressure on Steve Parker for that second spot meanwhile Sean Johnson continues to show the way and continues to run in that first spot So laps are beginning to run down and we have Jamie Barnes who's all over the backside of Kelsey Carpenter as Jamie's trying to get himself into that fourth position so big time racing for first and second and third and fourth
you've got three veterans out there and then you've got the well, I guess Ashley is could, could be considered a veteran she's been at this for about three years now oh and Ashley washes the car up just a little bit in turns one and two and that was all that Kelsey needed Kelsey gets down underneath Ashley Ashley's trying to come back as they go down the back stretch Ashley on the inside and I think that's a veteran move there. Kelsey Carpenter kind of pinched her off. Kelsey moves into the third spot. We're on the final lap. And folks, this is going to end up with the 14 of Sean Johnson, your winner. Steve Park in the 23P at the second spot. Kelsey Carpenter with that late pass in the third spot. Ashley Johnson with, again, a nice strong run in the fourth spot. And your veteran, Jamie Barnes, in the fifth spot. Michael Bollinger finishes out sixth. And the modified division would have the honor of the Memorial Day salute, running the missing man formation to honor all of those who were lost in the previous season with the uh, racing community. And here we go with your A feature race for the Modifieds. And as usual, the Modifieds would, um, how do I say this, maintain their unpredictability. Uh, what in the early stages of this race is going to look somewhat predictable. Uh, with uh, a uh, predictable outcome uh, ends up being anything but and uh, typical modified racing and I think that's what makes the uh, mods uh, so entertaining and enjoyable to have as a division at Skagit and uh, you've got in the 7k Kevin Smith who goes out to a comfortable lead over his brother in the 8W, Rick Smith. And the Modifieds are going to run uh, numerous laps without incident, inc incidents. And um, it uh, appears to be a pretty quiet, straightforward race, especially for uh, the two Smith brothers. Uh, Rick Smith up uh, uh, in the second spot and Kevin Smith uh, on point uh, and that, that uh, focus will, will stop the sun as it uh, eventually sets uh, that's the reason why the camera goes in and out of focus is because it catches the glare of the sun and loses the uh, backside of the track and so it has to refocus So uh, we've got some close competition going on for the third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth spots. And uh, I'm going to be following that here in a little bit. And uh, then we're going to see uh, up jumps unpredictability as we get our first caution. And that's the 51 of Greg Moore. So Greg Moore sent to the back of the field. And he immediately set sail to start gobbling up positions and getting back into the fray of this. Here's your battle for third, fourth, fifth. What's going on? We've got four cars that are all fighting it out for third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. As up front, Rick Smith continues to have what apparently or looks like an easy drive, followed by his brother again. Rick Smith in the 8W. Excuse me, Kevin Smith is, is on the point. 
having what appears to be a uh, easy time of it. Another shot of Craig Moore as he continues to advance his way back up towards the front. Ben Gunderson and Adam Holtrop are going at each other lap after lap. I do believe that's for the uh, fourth and fifth spot. Well, Jeff Blanton is having a good tussle for that third spot. Shot of Rick Smith in that 8W. And you can see that uh, it's side-by-side -side racing for third. And now we've got, uh, oh, Adam Holtrop slows, gets tagged by, uh, I believe it was Ben Gunderson, uh, simply because Adam slowed to a stop and pulled it off the track. Did get it off the track, so no caution. So the Modifieds continue to race under green conditions. And while I was following, Adam Holtrop, Rick Smith thought the yellow had come out. It didn't. And this allowed his brother in the 8W to go right on by Rick Smith and take the lead. And now Rick finds himself in a heck of a battle with a very stubborn brother, Kevin Smith, excuse me, Rick Smith, who doesn't want to give it up. That is, give up the lead. So, roles are now reversed. You now have Rick Smith in the 8W leading this race with Kevin Smith finding himself needing to put serious pressure on his brother if he's going to regain that lead. And both the brothers come up onto a slower car. And there it is, you see it, the unpredictability of the modifieds as Rick Smith tags the slower car. Two cars go around, Rick Smith manages to get through the, the the mess as did his brother however they determined that Kevin Smith in the 7k car had come to a full stop and because he came to a full stop under a condition of caution he was sent to the back of the field as was his brother in the 8 W. Rick Smith. And the cars all woe up as we have a car that finds itself dead in corners three and four, and that's the 22M of Mel Decker. So after several cautions and the uh, uh, caution which sent both the Smith brothers to the back of the field. The leader is now your 52 car of Jeff Morris. With one lap to go. This one is go, oh, and the 25 car, as you can see, hops the berm, slams into the side of poor uh, Kevin Smith, who slams into the side of his brother, Rick Smith, and another car, uh, the 22 Mel Decker, nowhere to go. He comes to a stop, resting against Ben Gunderson. So, excuse me, it was the 25 car, hit the berm, went off the berm, hit the side of the 7K of Kevin Smith, who hit Ben Gunderson. It wasn't his brother that he hit. So we're going to have a green-white checker and we're down to a five cars that are able to continue to run. And again, Jeff Morris continues 
to be your leader. And we're on the white flag lap. And this one is over. The 52 of Jeff Morris wins it. The 51M of Craig Moore, who was brought out his own caution, went to the back of the field, came all the way back to take second place. In the third spot, the 67S of Mike Stelz. In the fourth spot, the 4C of Carl Franson. And in the fifth spot, the 22 of Mel Decker. And here we go with your A feature race, your main four, your Northwest Focus Midgets. 21 cars. So once again, for those of the uh, that I may, uh, are not aware, that the Northwest Focus Midgets is one of the largest, if not the largest, Focus Midget clubs or associations in the entire United States. And we have the wonderful privilege of having them right here located in the great Pacific Northwest. Mike Stryker was on the pole in the number eight car. He started this event. Mike is a young 60 years of age. And uh, I actually chatted with him for uh, a little bit at uh, in the pit area and uh, had a good conversation with Mike uh, uh, he, uh, struck me as quite the gentleman and uh, was very helpful and enjoyed talking about uh, uh, the Northwest Focus Midgets and uh, and the midget and running it and said uh, he had nothing but praise for the organization and uh, really enjoys running running this particular class So right there, folks, in the 28 car is Evan Marginson. And Evan Marginson, I do believe last season was the um, uh, champion, was the uh, Northwest uh, Focus Midget Association champion. I, I might be wrong on that, but, but I think he did, did win the championship. Evan's been racing since he was... Oh my goodness, uh, probably 12 or 13 or maybe even younger. I first met uh, Evan when he was uh, 16 and he was racing with the uh, Washington Midget Racing Association. And what Evan basically does once he captures the lead, which he now has, he simply puts on a clinic. And the uh, uh, his performance was... Uh, quite frankly dominating and um, he's definitely going to win this race he won uh, the pre preceding race prior to this one so he's gonna make it two in a row now the car that he's driving the car that he's campaigning that is the Ken Ferris car that uh, on our last webcast I uh, mentioned about uh, Kenny Ferris uh, gave a little information on Ken that uh, Ken a number of years ago uh, won the WMRA championship, uh, long time midget racer, and uh, then life, uh, I, yeah, I'm not going to say life necessarily took him away from it, he just, he'd done it so long that he decided he needed a break, and uh, here we are uh, after several years of Ken uh, being out of it, uh, he wanted to get back into it, so he went out got himself a uh, Northwest Focus Midget and uh, when he is not able to run the car because uh, he uh, frequently is uh, earning a living on weekends uh, he now lets uh, Evan Marginson uh, bring the car out to the track and Evan does his usual stellar professional driving And the thing that is really impressive about the Northwest Focus Midgets, I believe this is the second main now that I've seen them run at Skagit in which they go green, white, 
checker without a single caution. And so this one, as I've already alluded to, is uh, the win is going to be the 28 car of Evan Marginson. The 24 car of Nick Evans will take the second spot. The 9T of Tristan Thomas in the third spot. In the fourth spot, it'll be the 9S of Sawyer Lind. In the fifth spot, it'll be the number eight of Mike Stryker. 60-year-old young Mike Stryker. So I'll let you go ahead and finish out watching this as uh, your Northwest Focus Midgets put on a good show. Put on a good show, a great show for the fans this Saturday night. And they'll be back at Skagit. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many more times, but uh, they'll, they'll be they'll be back at Skagit a, a number of times. And oh, by the way, um, we've got upcoming some very exciting racing on the sprint car scene in the Pacific Northwest. Next week is uh, part two of the John Carroll Classic, which will feature your 360 sprint car division. And then in two weeks after that, it is Dirt Cup, a three-day show for your 360s. And then there'll be uh, a couple weeks break. Oh, and then uh, the following weekend, uh, we go down to uh, Grace Harbor Raceway for the Fred Brownfield Memorial. And by the way, both uh, Dirt Cup and the Fra Fred Brownfield Memorial uh, are the ASCS National Tour comes into town. So the ASCS National Tour will uh, be here for Dirt Cup. And then the following weekend, they will be down at uh, Grace Harbor for the Fred Brownfield Memorial. And then about two weeks after that, we get to 360 Nationals. So we got a ton of sprint car racing left to be bringing you. And following the Northwest Focus Midgets, A-Main, we're gonna be bringing you the Outlaw Tuners. And here we go with your A feature race for your Outlaw Tuners. 14 car field. One of the larger fields so far this year for the Outlaw Tuners. And right off the bat we get one car that uh, hops a berm coming out of uh, turn two. Throws up a pretty good dust storm. Uh, but no harm, no foul. Everybody continues to race. So Tyler Ketchum is your initial leader in the 11 car, being challenged by the 54 that hops the berm coming out of two. 54 car is Vance Hibbert. Tyler and Vance are going to put on a bit of an ex exhibition or I don't know they're both going to race each other hard for several laps for that first spot both Vance and Kyle, side by side, door to door racing, duking it out for the first spot and caution comes out as, I'm not sure if he caught it, a piece of molding or uh, debris came off a car, so caution came out for debris. So on the restart, Tyler Ketchum in the lead. Your 
outlaw tuners are at it again. Oh boy, Vance almost got that car up and over as once again he uh, tried to take the shortcut, hopped the berm coming off of uh, turn two and you saw that car got as close as it probably can get without going over. Fortunately it came back down on all fours, however he did fall back to the third spot. Now the 17 car of Kyle Hansen advantaging the mishap by Vance is able to get underneath Tyler Ketchum and takes over the lead. And folks, this one's going to end up with the 17 of Kyle Hansen taking the win. In the 22X, Brian Mickelson will find himself taking the second spot. In the third spot, it will be the 54 of Vance Hibbard. In the fourth spot, the number 11 of Tyler Ketchum. And in the fifth spot, it'll be the number 2 of TJ Campbell. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you're so inclined, hit that subscribe button and help build this channel. We really enjoy bringing the races to you. It's really fun. And as I mentioned uh, in the Northwest Focus uh, race and their A feature race, we've got some outstanding sprint car racing ahead of us in the month of June and July. And of course, we wrap the season up with the world of outlaws. Doesn't get any better than that, folks. So, uh, hey, this is Lauren Doolittle. Thanks for uh, joining in, and we will see you next week as we bring you part two of the John Carroll Classic featuring your 360 sprint cars from Skagit Speedway.